I greet you in the mighty and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is good to find myself once more fellowshipping with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe that the will of the Lord today will take place. The will of God today will happen in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us are ready for God to do something in us? Hallelujah. Amen. Clap your hands for yourself that you are in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. By name, I am Pastor Tendogenis Makananisa Simono. Hallelujah. Amen. So I will be sharing the word of God with you today. As the man of God has assigned me, I believe God has allowed it and he has permitted it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, God will make sure or he's obligated to change our lives today. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we open our Bible in the book of John chapter 10? We'll take our reading from 7 to verse 16. Hallelujah. Have you found it? Have you found it? Can I read? Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the ship. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the ship did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known by my own. As the father knows me, even so, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Hallelujah. Can I read verse 11 for you again? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Can we close our eyes? We thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing in us today. We thank you for your supply of all our needs. We thank you because we are God. And we thank you because we know you are going to do something new and permanent in our lives today. Father, let your will be done in us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When we are reading the Bible verse, Jesus was talking to his disciples. The Bible says he was telling them that he is a good shepherd. Today I want us to talk about the heading that says Jesus the good shepherd. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Jesus says, here he is saying, I am the door. The door to where the door to the kingdom of life. And anyone who goes in to this kingdom through the door, which is me, Jesus, can go in and out and find good pastures. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we go in through the door, that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by his death on the cross of Calvary. It means we are going into what? Into his kingdom. And when we are now into his kingdom, we now come become the flock or the sheep to him. And he is our shepherd. In other words, he is he, it is he 
who leads us as we are going in and out. It is he who directs us as we are living day in and day out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here Jesus was giving an example to his disciple. Saying there have been other shepherds who came before me. In other words, these shepherds, they appeared in the form of Christ. But they were not Christ. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible, when it goes down, he says, these shepherds are, high, are hirelings. Means there are people who are not qualified or authorized to be shepherds in your life. Meaning they are only pretending to be me, whereas they are not me. These people, they come before you in an appearance or in a format of me, the true and good shepherd. Yet, what they do, they don't lead you in the rightful way like I would do. That's why he said to his apple that the thieves comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Meaning, these, three sh these shepherds, when they come, when they do these things, it means their mission is not to save but it's to destroy it, destroy us. But they come in a form of what? Of a good shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Meaning these people, this shepherd, when they come, they come in a character that is almost like of Christ. Meaning they come to deceive us. Meaning they come to, to lure us into the wrong path, into the wrong way. Meaning they come to take us out of the way so that when the true shepherd comes, he doesn't find us in the, rule, in the true way. He finds us in the wrong way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 11 that I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Don't forget we are the sheep of his flock. Are you hearing me? We as children of God, we are the sheep to his flock. Meaning Christ is the only one who has to lead us because he's the only one who knows the way we ought to take. He's the only one who has to direct us because he's the only one who knows the way we have to take. That's why he is able to lay down his life for his sheep to do what? To be safe. The wrong shepherd when they come, when trouble comes or when the wolf approaches, they think about themselves and they run for their lives. That's what the Bible says. A hireling, when the wolf comes, he runs away and leaves his flock alone for the wolf to come and scatter it. Come and show my way. It means who na live a disha baba when baba sing right tika rama pilwale ina. Who are mainly there to scatter us from where Jesus has placed us? Are you hearing me, somebody? It means there are shepherds in our lives that we are following. That they look like they are the true shepherds. They look like they are leading us in the wrong way. But in reality, they are di redirecting us from the will of God. They are taking us away from the will of God. That's why when problems, they come, these shepherds, they will run away from us. They will leave us to defend ourselves. We are the flock. Jesus is our protector. He's our guider. He's our mentor. He's our savior. That's why he says, when trouble comes, I will cover you. That's why he said in his word, when the enemy comes, I will lift up the standard. He's doing what? He's laying down his life. So your life might be safe. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me, somebody? He says when the enemy comes in like a flood, when the wolf approaches, when problem appro approaches, when storm rises in your midst, when dust gets into your eyes, I will lay down my life. 
so you can be safe. So it means when the trouble comes, it will find Jesus instead of you. Are you hearing me, somebody? When troubles come, it finds Jesus instead of you. In other words, Jesus takes your place. He shifts you and hides you and you become saved. And he stands in the way of the trouble and faces it himself. And when the trouble is over, he then takes you and reposition you where? In your right path. Now, the question that we can ask ourselves is, who is our shepherd? Ask your neighbor and say, who is your shepherd? Jesus told his disciples that my shepherds, my sheep, sorry, they know me. When I speak, they can identify my you voice and my words it means when jesus speaks to your life and he says no you are able to hear and you are able to listen and follow the instruction that the instruction was a no not a yes not a maybe not a perhaps it was a no why because you know the voice of your shepherd Meaning the intentions of your shepherd are always good. Remember he said in Jeremiah that my thoughts are not like your thoughts. My thoughts are higher than you. And my thoughts are to prosper you and to give you more life. Not to harm you. Meaning when Jesus, when he says, I am your shepherd, I am your door. It means when you walk into this crawl. When you walk into Lishakale, Ladipudi, that we are, you walk through him, the door, who is who? Christ. And when you are now inside the crawl, inside where Christ is leading his flock, it means therefore you are what? You are safe. Because he's standing where he says, I am the door. Meaning he is standing in front of you, leading you to where? To your greener pastures. The question I'll ask again is, who's leading you to your greener pastures? Who is redirecting your way to your greener pastures? Hallelujah. If Jesus were, be, were to be or is the one who is leading us to a greener pastures, to be honest with you, half of the problems that we have today, we wouldn't be having them. Because he would have been there to save us from the storm that we are facing. I have come to realize that as a Christian, we Christians, we are our own problem. Do you know that somebody? We Christians, we are our own problem. In what sense? We are the one who misinterpret the word of God. How many of you know that? We are the one who misplaces the word of God in our life. We know the word of God. We know the scriptures. Yes, it's true. But we always call the wrong scripture to the wrong problem. Therefore, we act wrongly towards the problem. And it makes us now to be the shepherd of ourselves. And we lead ourselves astray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Philippi 4, 19, it says, I will supply all your needs. M who? Me, Jesus, the good shepherd, who lays down my life for your sake. I will supply all your needs according to my glorious riches. Hallelujah. It's Philippians 4 verse 19. It says, God shall supply all our needs according to his glorious riches. The problem is when we are now leading ourselves as our own shepherd, we even forget that scripture. We quote the scripture instead that the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
You are in a place where you are in need of something. You are not in a place which is requiring or asking for your ability to do something. Are you hearing me? Am I making sense? Am I making sense? The Bible says, I will supply all your needs according to my glorious riches. You are a human being. You need a job, for instance, because that's what most of us want, right? You need a job, for instance. The Bible says, I will supply all your needs. Instead of staying behind my shepherd and let him lead me in the way and the footsteps that I ought to take, I tend to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You are not in a place, let me repeat, you are not in a place which is requiring your ability. You are in a place which is requiring your shepherd to lead you. Hallelujah. You are in a place which is requiring your shepherd to do what? To lead you. You are not in a place where your ability is wanted. And as you follow this shepherd, you must have faith in him. You must depend on him. You must trust in him. You must lean on him. Why? Because he lays down his life for your sake. Another problem that we create as Christians, when the wolf comes, we shift the shepherd in front of us and place him aside and say, I can deal with this. I am a child of God. I can deal with this. And forgetting that Christ is the one to do what? To lead you. The Bible says you are victorious in Christ. It didn't say you are victorious with Christ. You are victorious inside of Christ. Meaning outside of Christ, you are not a victor. Are you hearing me, somebody? You are victorious inside. Where you have used the door, who is Jesus, your good shepherd, to enter where he is. You are victorious. Why? Because he's the one who fights your battles for you. Meaning your victory is sure. You don't have to fight. You only have to sit back and watch him fight for you so he can accredit the victory to you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Your job is not to fight. Your job is to sit down, let him fight for you, but at the end of these things, you are the one who gets the victory. Meaning you are the one who, crown, who, who is crowned the victor. When they are saying they are looking for a person who has conquered the enemy in this situation, the crown comes to who? To you. Why? Because your shepherd has led you through it. Your shepherd has led you through it. You are still in his flock. You are still in Christ, who is your good shepherd. Hallelujah. 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 Ask your neighbor and say, who is your shepherd? And are you following your true shepherd? Hallelujah. Jesus is the true shepherd. Who is again what? The door. And he said that I have come that they might have what? Life abundantly. Meaning when I am his flock, when I am behind him... As he's leading me, I have life in abundance, one. Two, my victory, I'm victorious in Christ. Three, my needs are all met in him. He provides for all of them. Four, his grace is always sufficient for me. Meaning there is nothing that I need, that I lack, that I won't have. Because my provider, my leader, my father, my shepherd is right in front of me. 
Is your shepherd still in front of you? Or you are the one who's in front of your shepherd? Is your shepherd still in front of you? Or you are the one who is in front of your shepherd? Hallelujah. 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 We are living in the last days and the Bible says in the last days there will be antichrist. Meaning these shepherds will be many. Therefore you have to be inside his crawl for you to know what his voice. So that you don't lose your way. When he speaks you will hear. Meaning it's not a matter of sight, it's a matter of hearing. It's not a matter of seeing him walking in front of him. It's a matter of hearing him leading you. That's why the Bible says, we do not walk by sight, but by what? By faith. We do not walk by sight, but by faith. That's why the Bible says, whatever you ask, you must believe. It didn't say whatever you ask, you must see it. That is there. Therefore, you will have it. No. It says whatever you ask, you must do what? Believe that you have it. Therefore, you will what? You will receive it. Meaning, you must believe by all things that the shepherd who is in front of you, who is Jesus, he knows exactly what is good for you and what is harmful to you. He knows exactly what is good for you and what is harmful to you. And he will always give you what is best for you all the time. All the time. He will always give you what is best for you. But you have to be what the sheep of what? Of his flock. He cannot lead you if you are outside his crawl. He even said, even here in my ship, there are some who are not of my what? My flock. But I have them here so they will learn my ways and hear my voice. Meaning they will be, become one with my ship and I'll become one with them as their shepherd. He says, as I know the Father, the Father knows me. And get it when we pray, we say in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Trinity of Heaven. Meaning Jesus, the Son, cannot lead you without the Holy Spirit and without the Father. And the way to the Father is through the door, who is who? Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit becomes the seal that you are now the sheep of the flock. And Jesus will do what? Will lead you to your destiny. Do you still have your shepherd in front of you? Or it is you who is in front of your shepherd? Ask somebody that question. Do you still have your shepherd in front of you? You know, it's very, it's very easy in the life that we are living today for us to replace the true shepherd. Do you know that? By what? By fleshly things of this world that we yearn after, that we long after, that we cry for, that we run after. We forget that it's Christ who has to lead me into my greener pastures. It is Christ who has to give me all things that I need. It is Christ who has to hold me by the hand and carry me to my destiny. And we easily sometimes lose our way and we replace Christ as our shepherd. And we make ourselves our own shepherd. Let's look into the, 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 the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible said King Nebuchadnezzar placed a law in his kingdom. 
that nobody should be found. No one should be found worshiping an unknown God. And they were found doing that. And the other prime ministers reported them to the king. And they said, you must punish them because you said there will be punishment for these people. The fire was built up for them. The Bible says when they were thrown in the furnace of fire, Nebuchadnezzar said, there is a fourth man that I see. Where? In the fire. Who looks like who? Jesus, the son of God. Meaning, at that particular time, and that particular moment, where they were thrown in the furnace, because Jesus is their shepherd, he laid down his life for their sake. And he entered into the furnace and covered them. So the furnace does not devour them and finish them or kill them. Hence the people would have said, where is their God that they have been praying to? Why didn't he save them from the furnace? But because he's a good shepherd, he also went into the fire with them. And covered. The Bible says, when they came out of the fire, nothing, nothing, not even one hair was bent on them. Not even one. You can see how fragile Miriri is. You know when you put fire to your hair, there's nothing that anyone can do. Not even water will help you. But the Bible says, not even hair, an inch of a hair was bent on them. Meaning the way they entered is the same way they came out. Fine and perfectly in good health. Why? Because the shepherd was there with them. The shepherd was co has covered them through that situation. Now if it were you and me, before we could enter the fire, there were many lies that we, we could have told. Are you hearing me somebody? If it were you and me in the day we're living in, there were many stories and lies that we could have told the king at that point. Some of us would even go to the point of denouncing God as our savior. And say, no, 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 I only, I only heard. Good tea, what is this Jesus? I'm not sure. You know, I was still trying to follow and, um, you know, I was still trying to search whether he saves indeed or he's a king. I was not sure. I was just, you know, me, I'm, me, I'm very innocent. If it were you and me. We can never say, yes, I am a Christian of Charis. Jesus has saved me. He died on the cross of Calvary so that I might have life in abundance. I am here and I'm still alive. And what I am only through his grace and his death. Ask your neighbor for the last time, who is leading you? Who is leading you? Is it Jesus, the good shepherd, who is leading you? Therefore, if he is the one, then why do we keep deriving ways to come in and to come out of situations? Why can't we trust that he is our shepherd and he will save us from this situation? Why can't we hold on to him, the author and the finisher of our faith, and see where he will lead us? Why can't we hold on to this grace that found us and saved us and cleansed us and made us what we are and see where it will take us? Why do we keep replacing him in our life? Why do you allow the things of this world to keep replacing him in our life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we read Psalm 23? I know we all know this scripture. Psalm 23, can we all read? Read from your Bible. From verse 1 to verse 4. Read from your Bible. Hallelujah. Let me read it. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. David here, he was thinking of all the things that the Lord has done in his life. And he has realized that it has only been by God that I went through all of it and I made it this far. The Bible says David was just a young boy who is a shepherd to his father's flock. Meaning he was taking care of his father's cattle. And the Bible says while he's doing that, there will be a lot of animals who would always come to try and attack what the sheep, the cattle that is taking care of. And the Bible says always David will fight to save his father's flock. In other words, his father's cattle was important to him. That's why he would fight to save it all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thinking that when David was now sitting down and looking over all these things that he comes across in the bush, in the mountains, wherever he was taking care of the flock, when he now sat down, and look at them one by one. And examine them one by one. He saw that it was only by God's grace. It was only by God's grace that he did what he overcame. That's why he was able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. Meaning, in other words, if the Lord was not shepherding him or leading him as a shepherd, he was not going to be able to shepherd or lead his father's cattle. Let's not forget that we are the sheep, the flock of Jesus. And without a shepherd, we get scattered. We run everywhere. We even go to places that we're not supposed to go. We even eat things that we're not supposed to eat that will kill us. We even do things that we think they are good and they will benefit us. Hunting, they will all kill us and choke us to death. And as a shepherd, you always know which grass is good for your cattle to eat for the day. Am I right? Am I right? It means you know exactly where to take them so they can feed and they will be in good health. Isn't it? Meaning, Jesus also knows what is good for us. Therefore, there is no place that he will take you which will not benefit you. There is no place where he will take, take you or lead you which will not benefit you. Yes, when you reach there, to the place where you are supposed to feed there might be disappointments there, yes. There might be delay there, yes. There might be sicknesses there, yes. There might be all sorts of things that you can mention there, yes. But remember the Bible says that all things work for good. In Romans, it says all things work for good to them that believe and that are in Christ. Meaning, you being there, Jesus taking you there, it's not a mistake or an incident. You are not there by chance, but you are there by purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not there by chance. You are there by purpose. Why? Because your shepherd has led you to that place. Your shepherd has led you to that place, to that grass where you have to feed. Hallelujah. It does not matter how you find the place to be with your naked eyes. 
It does not matter how the place looks like. But he as a shepherd, he knows where to take you. And he knows what will work for you. Maybe at this present time, that high position job you are crying for is not the best thing for you yet. Not that it's not the best thing for you, full stop. It's not the best thing for you yet. Meaning tomorrow, it might be the best thing for you. But for now, this is where your shepherd is leading you. This is where your shepherd is leading you. And you have to take delight in it. Because when you, do, you don't delight in him, he cannot give you the desires of your heart. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Because you are with me. Though I walk through problems and challenges, I fear no evil because you are leading me. Though I'm in lack and disappointment, I fear no dismay because you are leading me. You are right in front of me. Therefore, I cannot lose my step on my way. It means every step that I take it's calculated and it's measured for my good. And every strand that Jesus take, it cannot be more than the strand you can take. It means when he takes a step, he measures it for your good. And he qualifies it and authorizes it so you'll be able to take it. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack anything. I will not be in need of anything. I will not worry of anything. Why? Because my shepherd is right in front of me. And he takes care of me as his beloved. As his beloved. As his beloved. He takes care of me because I am important to him. Remember the Bible says in Genesis, God said, God said, let us make men in our own what? Image. Let us make men in our own likeness. A man that he will be able to follow as we lead. A man that will be able to obey as I speak. A man that will hearken to my voice when I say something. That's why we are created in his own image. Hallelujah. 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 He created us knowing that he will be able to lead us. As the shepherd, he will be able to take care of us. If God knew that he won't be able to take care of you, he wouldn't have created mankind. He wouldn't have created mankind, but he created you and me because he knew that he is able to take care of us. Hallelujah. He created us because he knew that he will be able to take care of us. That's why David says he leads me in the way or in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Meaning God will never allow anything that will bring shame to his name to happen to you. The question is, are we allowing him to lead us? Is he still the one leading us or we are the ones leading him? I believe here in the Bible when David said that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David knew very well. He knew very well that there are all needs and all kinds of wants that he desires in life. 
He knew that there are all these things that you and I, we are praying for each and every day, day in and day out. But still he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Knowing he was confident and he had faith that this shepherd that is in front of me will make sure that he provides for me. Another thing that we do as Christians, we always feel like God is failing us or God has failed us. Remember he says in, 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 in Psalm that he leads us in the way of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. For him to be glorified in us and magnified in us by people who are looking at us and say indeed God is alive and he exists because we saw him through the life of a woman whom God can never fail you. But we ourselves, we fail each. We fail ourselves. And we fail each other. Every day, all the time. I don't care if you are a professional what what or you're what what. The truth is, we say we fail ourselves and we fail each other day in, day out. And it is only God who can never fail us. The thing that makes us to feel or to look and see things as if God has failed us is because we replaced our true shepherd. And we made ourselves our own shepherds. And we tell ourselves we can make it, we can get through there. Whereas the way that leads to that place, we have gone out of it. Meaning we are no longer in him. Our shepherd. Hallelujah. 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 Ask your neighbor and say, who is your shepherd? Is he still our shepherd? Is he still the one who is leading us? Or are we leading ourselves? Like I said before, it is very easy for you to replace your shepherd. It is very easy. In this sense, that when the wrong, the hirelings, when they appear, remember they appear in a form of a true what? A true shepherd. But it means we recognize them by what? By their voice. Meaning when the wrong shepherd starts saying things to you, you can now identify, oh, no, no, my true shepherd cannot lead me through this path, but he can lead me through this path. Meaning now if I start doing things that are contradicting the word of my shepherd and I am fine with it, it means the one who is in front of me is not a shepherd, it's a hireling. Who when troubles come my way, he is going to abandon me with my troubles and flee for their life. And I'll be left alone. Meaning right now we need to recalculate and recheck, re-examine ourselves and see, do we still have Jesus as our true shepherd or we have a hireling as our shepherd? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we still have Jesus as our shepherd? Or we are having a hiling as our shepherd? Let me explain the difference between a shepherd and a hiling so you can understand. A true shepherd, he says, I am the door that you come through within to the father i am the door he said in his word that i am the true i am the truth the way and what and the life 
And he says, nobody can go to the Father except through me. Meaning you have to pass through Jesus to get to the other side. And the true shepherd says, if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. The true shepherd says, I am the rewarder of those who seek me diligently. The true shepherd says, I provide all your needs according to my glorious riches. The true shepherd says, by my stripes you are healed. The true shepherd says, my grace is sufficient for who? For you. Lastly, the true shepherd says, I lay down my life to save yours. That's the true shepherd. Now a hiling, a hiling says, whichever way you use, you can find any way to get to this side, make use of it. So it doesn't matter whether I have killed whether I have wronged, whether I have sinned, as long as I get to the other side, I'm good. That's a hiling. A hiling does not say I will provide all your needs. A hiling says you have to work hard and labor for what you want. That's a hiling. A hiling does not say... I heal by my stripes, you are healed. No. A hiling says, do whatever you can do to make sure your life is in good place. That's a hiling. That's a hiling. A hiling never says my grace is sufficient because he doesn't have grace. Ma, a hiling says when trouble comes, flee for your life and find a hiding place. Meaning create whatever situation, whatever lie. As long as you are safe at the end of the day, you are good. Do whatever. Zama mo zami wande. Nakshuba kshube. As long as you are on the right side. You are good. That's a hiling. Lastly, a hiling will never give up their life in exchange of yours. A hiling will never lay down their life to save yours. No. A hiling will say, Lo e nao tlai po na ikemele. Lo e nao munna. Bonatele. And hilings, they come in different forms. They can be our friends, our colleagues, people we love, people we cherish, people that we will never, ever, ever in a lifetime think they will ever do anything wrong or they will ever lead us astray. The devil does use those as hilings. If you have a person, for example, who is in your life, when things are tough, he will tell you, go to church. When it looks like, they come and say, that I can take you to. Know that you are following a highling, you are not following a true shepherd. A true shepherd will say, hold on unto me. Don't lose, you are about to make it. Hold on to me. Don't faint yet. I am with you. Hold on unto me. Don't be afraid of the storm that is surrounding you. I am right here with you. It will not overflood you. Hold on unto me. Because there is the crown of life on the other side waiting for you. A true shepherd will say that. 
Then when you feel like you are failing, your legs are trembling, it's like you can't carry on. He says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. I strengthen you day in and day out. All you have to do is to hold on to me. Be right behind me. Don't worry of the trouble and the storm that is blowing and making noise all around you. I'm right in front of you. Stay behind me and I will cover you. I will cover you. I will protect you. You are my own. I died for you on the coast of Calvary. You are my own. You deserve the crown of life. So I'm right in front of you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's tough, yes. They are laughing at you, yes. They have made you a laughing stock. They are mocking you. They have written you off. They said you are worthless. You are useless. You will amount to nothing. Hold on. I'm right in front of you. Hold on. Let them talk. Let them leave you. Let them undermine you. Let them insult you. Let them reject you. Hold on. I'm right in front of you. I am your good shepherd. Hold on. My grace is sufficient for you. Let them live for your good. Let them reject you for your good. Sleep with hunger for your good. Be sick for your good. Be jobless for your good. You are unmarried for your good. But hold on. Hold on, I'm in front of you. As long as you hold on and you let me lead you to your greener pastures, I will take you. I am the one who predestined and made up your destiny and positioned you in a way where will take you to your heart's desires. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. I am your good shepherd. I will never lead you astray. Long life is your portion. Healing is your portion. Breakthrough is your portion. Prosperity is your portion. Long life is your portion. Success is your portion. Hold on unto me. He said in John that I am the true vine and you are the branches. Stay within the vine. You will yield out fruits that will give glory to his name. Don't cut yourself off. Don't cut yourself loose. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. I don't know what you are facing. I don't know what you've prayed about. I don't know what's your problem. I don't know the name of your disease. I don't know what they have called you. But what I know is as long as you hold on, as long as you hold on. As long as child of God you hold on. Let them leave me as long as I'm holding on. Let them run away as long as I'm holding on. Let them laugh at me and make me a laughing stock and mock me. As long as I'm holding on. As long as I have my Jesus. As long as I have my Jesus. Let the worst happen. Let all hell break loose as long as, as long as I'm holding on. I know we are afraid of to say the word. Let all hell break loose. Let the worst happen. As long as I have my Jesus. As long as I have my shepherd in front of me. I know I'm going to make it to the other side. It doesn't matter the storm. It doesn't matter the delay. It doesn't matter the condition. It doesn't matter that death sentence that the doctor has given you. Hold on. Hold on. Can we all lift, stand on our feet? Hold on. Tell your neighbor and say, hold on. Hold to Jesus, your true shepherd. Hold to Jesus, your true shepherd.
Don't be afraid of them running away. Don't try to keep them when it's time for them to leave. After all, everything that happens in your life when you are the sheep of his flock, it's never a mistake. It's always an appointment with him. Let them reject you. Let them reject you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Let them reject you. As long as Jesus is your shepherd. As long as Jesus is your shepherd. Can we all lift up our hands to the Lord and we close our eyes? As long as he's my shepherd, I'm going to hold on. As long as he's in front of me, I'm going to hold on. It doesn't matter where he leads me, I will follow. Where you lead me, Lord, I will follow. As long as you are in front of me, it is well with me. All is all right with my world. All is all right with me. All is all right with me. Where you lead me, where you take me, I will follow. I will follow. As long as you're my shepherd. Is he still the shepherd in your life? Are you still holding on to him? At times we let go of the grip of the Lord because of things and challenges we meet. Not that we don't trust him, we trust him somehow, but somehow on some way we believe that he cannot do it for us. We believe that he is not able to take us to the other side of the river. Somehow we feel like he cannot lead us to exactly the point where I want to be. Some of us will even say, Lord, I have been disappointed. I have been hurt. I have been rejected. I have, I have, they have done all sorts and manner of things. But I need you to lead me from now on. I need you to lead me from now on. If you need Jesus to be your shepherd, please run to the front. If you need Jesus to be your shepherd, please run to the front. He is here for you and he is ready to lead you in the path of righteousness. He is ready to lead you in the path of righteousness. In the path of righteousness. In the path of righteousness. Where he's going to meet all your needs. Where he's going to provide for you. Where he's going to change your situation, your circumstance. Where he's going to heal your disease. As long as you are the ship of his flock. He's going to take you to the other side. Oh, lead us, Lord. Lead us, Jesus. Father, we are here. Lead us. Lord, some of us, we've let go of your way. We've let go of your hand. Father, we've led ourselves astray. Because of the pressure that we are feeling. Because of the situations that we are meeting. Because of the afflictions that we are meeting. Lord, some of us let go of your hand because of the disappointments. Because of the rejection. Because they've been mocking us. Lord, they've been laughing at us. Lord, they have write us off. We say we will, they will, say we will amount to nothing. Father, we have let go of your hand. And we find ourselves on the other side of your flock. We are no longer the sheep of your flock. Lift up your hands to the Lord and close your eyes. But here we are, Lord. Here we are, Father. Lead us once more. Lead us once more because it's you alone who knows the step we ought to take. The road we ought to take. It's you alone who predestined us, who destined us for greater heights and greater things. Lead us, Jesus. Lead us, beautiful Savior. Let's say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before your holy throne. Lord, we are the sheep that has lost our way. But today, Jesus, we realize our mistakes. 
and we realize our wrong. Father, we have decided. Say, Father, I have decided to turn away from my wrongdoings, to turn away from my mistakes, and run back to you, who is my true shepherd. Father, open the door for me unto your kingdom, for you are the door to your ship. Father, I come to you. Wash me of my sins. Cleanse me with your precious blood. And make me your child again. Make me the ship of your flock. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for receiving me back into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands for yourself as you are going to sit down. Welcome to the family of the Lord. Welcome to the family of the Lord. Clap your hands. Clap your hands and thank the Lord for saving your life.